This is the Beyond the Dojo podcast. I'm Lauren. I'm Jeremiah. And this is episode 21, I think. Coronavirus. I think it's like episode 21. It's just been so long in quarantine. I just, I don't know what day it is anymore. I don't know what podcast episode we're on. Just so lost. Sure. Okay, it's actually been a few weeks since we've recorded one. I'm pretty sure this is episode 21. If it's not... Sorry for the confusion. If it's sure, not it doesn't Lawrence matter. Wrong. Anywho, <laughs> well, part of it is that we couldn't think of any topics to talk about. <laughs> Despite yeah. the fact that we're talking all the time. Any appropriate topics that are, you know, yeah. good for public listening. Something positive, maybe uplifting. Something positive and not being really rude like we sometimes are. So, yeah. you know, not fighting the whole time. Yeah. Um, anyway, so today we're going to talk about uh, beginner's mindset. Mm. Mm-hmm. Beginner's mind. So, Jeremiah, you want to... Give a definition of what you think beginner's mind or beginner's mindset is. It's the the perspective that you're always open to new knowledge. Um, to me, it's maybe not. Yeah, I would say it just you're you're always open and seeking new knowledge. Okay. Um, I think that changes as you go on in your karate life. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, and sometimes you get to a point where not all knowledge is new. New knowledge is good knowledge. Yeah, okay. You know, and you kind of want to, in that kind of attitude, you know? Yeah. Sometimes people take it the wrong way. Oh, beginner's mind. That means anybody can tell me what to do, and they're right, and I should do it. And it's a submissive thing, and I don't think that is all, at all correct. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's kind of an open mind and just a willingness to learn yeah so um and which actually we kind of cover this whole, we covered it i think we've touched on this topic a number of times without coming out and saying it directly but like um we've talked about this a lot where you know you go to a seminar and you have an open mind because you yeah. are there to learn you're there yeah. to to glean information from other people you know in whatever capacity you can i guess and and um you're just not a closed-minded turd yeah, basically. 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 You know, um, it, it is impossible to master the things we do. Mm-hmm. Um, people get really, really, really close. Mm-hmm. And people think they get really, really, really close. Yeah. Um, and there's it's a difference. So. Well, okay, so you just kind of mentioned, you kind of touched on this with your definition. So you said that sometimes um, you shouldn't necessarily have a beginner's mind so when would that be like when you or not necessarily a beginner's mind but what is what is it what is a beginner's what what is a beginner's mind not <laughs> okay. i'll say i'll describe a situation where i would think that you have to be have a little bit more critical mind okay and that would be anytime you look at something and go you know what that looks like it'll hurt me trying to do okay. a technique so for your own personal safety mm-hmm. i think that's probably the first thing okay uh secondly um most cr- the most critical students you you teach are beginners mm-hmm. or, or generally yeah generally not all of them submit you know a lot of them are like why do we do this why is this why is that you know as they go on their karate life they don't have so many whys and it becomes hows and whats mm-hmm. but um in the very beginning it's why yeah. and i think that is part of a beginner's mind you should be critical thinking so if someone's teaching you something and you look at them and go it's not in line to what your karate is for you. Mm-hmm. You might want to be critical to it and be thinking, you know, do I really necessarily have to understand that or try that or yeah. put myself in that position? You know, yeah. Um, unless you paid for a seminar, you, you do as the sensei does, and you just kind of move on from there. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm not talking about events. I'm talking about your own practice mm-hmm. and how you adapt to it. Yeah. So I uh, I sat on a Q and A board one time and I made this point. I probably shouldn't have been so blunt about it, but I said essentially that if a teacher was instructing and um, they obviously had ailments that were based on, that that came about because of the way that they teach, you know, if they have replaced joints that are indicators of bad technique, of bad mechanics that they have not changed, and they're teaching that to you, that might be a good indicator that you shouldn't listen to that person. Um, and I had a question from a beginner that was said, okay, well, as a beginner, how do I know the difference? Hmm. So if you are actually a beginner, that's where it becomes harder because, you know, there's a whole ranking issue there. So it's like, not only do you have a beginner's mind, but you're also at the same time, if you have a more critical mind, like you said, and you're trying to look out for your own safety, how do you balance the two? How do you balance being critical and and safe 
and also being open to new ideas. Well, most of the joint injuries that we we kind of endure as karateka, uh, they don't, they're not overnight. Mm. You could you could do a certain thing for maybe even a month. I would, I'd say up to, I would venture up to a month before you start to have any wear and tear kind of issues. That being said, I would give it an honest try. Yeah. And through your repetitions, mm. you'll notice what muscles are sore and what muscles aren't. And if mm. if there's any kind of thing where it's it makes you concerned, mm. that's where you, your critical mind is answered. Because no matter, e- either it's your poor technique, mm-hmm. misunderstanding of what the teacher is trying to teach, mm-hmm. or the teacher is misleading you. Mm-hmm. Um, either way, it's causing bodily harm, and you need to investigate yeah. more into it. Yeah. And there again, you have to have a beginner's mind and say, okay, this is hurting me, sensei. Mm-hmm. How, what's going on here? Am I doing something wrong? Mm-hmm. Because if he's like, no, it looks good, it's great, then you got to concern yourself. I know I'm hurting. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't deny the pain. Yeah. So that's how I see, as a beginner, you kind of have to have a process, right? Mm-hmm. But that same process applies to not only beginners, but, you know, veterans. Mm-hmm. In the sense that if you take that same critical mind, you're not going to put yourself in bad situations. You'll just be able to make that decision quicker. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, so let's talk about what are maybe some, so flip it back to actually having a beginner's mind. So what are some common practices of someone who thinks like a beginner necessarily, or not necessarily thinks like a beginner, but has that mindset that I'm a beginner? Hmm. Well, I think the first thing is you have to like, you definitely have to humble yourself. Yeah. You really have to humble yourself because mm-hmm. if you put yourself in that situation, you are being vulnerable to the person that you're listening to or learning off of yeah um and you just have to accept it yeah you know um because you truly can't be a a a begin have a beginner's mind and not be humble yeah i mean you know so yeah you you have to have that essence and it's not an act yeah you you truly have to you know have a a one-on-one talk to yourself like look Mm. if i really want to get better at this Mm. the first thing i have to do is accept coaching yeah. Accept teaching. Yeah. Once you accept the teaching, and then you can decide for yourself, yes, this is going to work for me. Mm. This is what I want my karate to be. Mm. Or no. Yeah. And those, the criteria that makes that yes or no is truly up to you. Yeah. In my personal case, it's personal safety and longevity. And then from there, it's functionality. How, how functional okay. is this idea that I'm learning? Yeah. So. I think another point would be um, being a good um, listener, so a, a, a student that actually is astute and listen and listens right. well. Um, I mean, that goes. I guess. I guess that can go hand in hand with the humility thing. But essentially, whenever you are learning from someone, you're not just halfway listening. You're right. trying to fully listen and understand, and you're also asking questions yeah. um, to get a fuller grasp of what it is they're trying to say. It's funny where um, we're doing all of our classes on Zoom, obviously, and we have a couple of students that are just like. Uh, they just like hardly pay attention. And then you have a couple that like ask a million questions and I'm like, are you just being a, a teacher's pet or do you actually have a question? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, but um, but it is, a, it is a good sign to, to continue to ask questions and like actually yeah. try to clarify and kind of, yeah. well, I heard, I, as a student, maybe even like push the teacher a little bit to explain things in a different mm-hmm. way. That way it solidifies in your brain or even like, you know, good conversational skills. Okay. So you're this teaching is, me this. Is well, this what you're saying? So you're reiterating it to the teacher. Let's, let's all also preface everything with a beginner's mind. You should also have a, a polite approach, approach and respectful approach. Yeah. Um, you shouldn't come across as if you're challenging the person, you should be mm-hmm. talking about the things they're talking. You know what I mean? Sometimes there are situations where, you kind of wonder if the if the the person asking the question is is asking the question to learn, or are they trying to disprove you or challenge you to should see if, how much you know? Is that a guard? What? Hey, <laughs> just saying. Episode nineteen, guys. Hey, so that being or said, I think you were talking about the sincerity in your training, like yeah. sincere training. And uh, Rick, the first time I ever heard someone describe that was Rick Houghton. Mm-hmm. He said, you know, you should be have a sincere kickel in mm-hmm. the training or. or, or and I honestly think that that's some profound words. You know, that changed the way I looked at my karate. Because mm. I wanted to make sure that what my karate is, is what I am. It mm. represents me 
mm. you know, authentically. So that's yeah. kind of another thing, you know, is your desire to achieve what you want your art to be. Yeah. Has to be the number one motivational factor in your, in your practice. Mm. It has to be the thing that you're focused on. Yeah. Um, the accolades and everything else will come with it if you're true to your practice. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? So, to me, some guys are just... Some people are in it to, to get fame and fortune. And kind of, <laughs> Which is kind of funny and grotty, but... Yeah, well, it kind of is, right? <laughs> but um, it kind of... It, by doing that, they kind of miss the whole point. Yeah. And, and then they separate themselves or lose that touch. You yeah. Know? So, it's, it's kind of strange to watch some people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think another point would be... Um, <clears throat> especially later down the road, like it goes along once again with the humility thing, but I think all of this is kind of based on the foundation of humility is going back to your fundamentals oh, yeah. and which, um, it's funny because I just, uh, actually I have a couple instances of this. So I just finished, um, my level one certification with precision nutrition and we had already had this discussion earlier this morning that we were going to do this podcast tonight about beginner's mind and sure enough, in one of the last videos, in one of the last chapters, they reiterated, like, having a beginner's mind as a coach, that you are constantly going back and revisiting your fundamentals and, and you know, like, learning the new science and whatever to be able to apply it to clients. Um, so it said that there, and I was like, okay, yeah. So, um, you know, being willing to go back and revisit what it is you've already learned. Um, you know, actually, the reason that this idea popped in my head, I'm not going to name any names, but... Someone on the Book of Faces made a comment about um, people who post and share videos of, like, hand katas and lower-level black belt katas and, like, saying, oh, this person does really awesome, or they're, like, making points about it, or maybe they're trying to provide a teaching point, even though they don't have a lot of years of experience, and they were criticizing those people because they're like, well everybody else around here has got a lot of experience and whatever and we've been training for 50 years well so what if you've trained 50 years have you trained 50 years have you trained five years 10 times i mean (laughs) what's there they are a beginner and they're excited about what they have to learn and even if they're off base even if they're maybe completely wrong or even if they have ulterior motives you know at least they're somewhat involved and i may you may not agree with the points that they make but that's a good time to maybe open a top like open a conversation that's kind of what facebook is for it's social media it's for people to be social so i don't really agree with criticizing people for bringing up basic ideas how about as more advanced karataka we instead look at that and say once again open mind is Return there something is there something yeah is there something that i can learn from from what this person is trying to share Absolutely. or can i somehow engage in this conversation maybe to help them maybe it's mm-hmm. not for me maybe it's for them how many times have you learned more from your students yeah. You know, coming and teach them a hand kata, then all of a sudden they, they'll say something that relates, how they could relate the movement to themselves, mm. but it makes such a better picture in your own mind. Yeah. You know, and you're like, dude, I'm going to steal that from you. I've told a couple of students, I'm going to use that now. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's to me, that beginner's mind is important, you know? Yeah. But also beginner mind, it, there's the other side of it where you're, the, you're willing to accept that you were wrong. Mm-hmm. You're willing to accept and admit that you're wrong. And that, to me, again, is part of humility, but at the same time is the flip side of the coin. Mm. Being open to, to learning, but also knowing and accepting that, hey, this is what I'm doing is wrong. I need to change it. Mm. You know? And you know, that's really important because basically that's what a beginner does. Yeah. Go they punch the wrong way. No, I accept that I <laughs> punch the wrong way. I have to change it. Well, and it's that simple, though. You know, yeah. It's that simple. And we just have to look at it from a bigger principle kind of thing where you're accepting that now what a major principle in your karate uh, practice is might be wrong. Yeah. And you might have spent 20 years doing it wrong. Mm. But think about it. That saves you 30, 40 more years to where you can train and do it right and give you longevity and, you know, better technique. So what's really funny is that we've been training with our teacher for probably four years now, sending videos and whatever and getting some feedback. And um, and every kata that I work on always comes down to, like, something's wrong with my step and punch. <laughs> so I have to fix that. And I've been working on Sochin for, like, the past three or four months. And the, I'm at the very end of the kata where you're at the inside block step and punch. So the um, Ushuke step in Oizuki, but it's in Fudorachi. 
<laughs> and literally the correction today was that the step and punch was wrong. And I'm like, are you? I like it's not it's not a huge deal, I guess, but it was kind of shocking. I'm like, and I literally yeah. I literally said this. I was like, why is it that every single kata goes back to I have to fix step and punch? Like, and I spend so much time on it, but I apparently do not have it right yet. Well, his answer was. Yes. <laughs> that fundamentally, the timing of the technique in the step and punch is the same timing throughout your blocks. If you get the yeah. coordination and timing of that technique, generally they can be translated to other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and basically, although you're, he's correcting that very simple thing, it is a profound thing. Yeah, I, I get that. And then, like, obviously, like, doing a step and punch is a little bit easier. Like, it's a little bit simpler of a technique to try to fix. Right. Then you know, trying to step in and do a block that's got like a exaggerated load, like I said, like a down block has two pa two parts. You mm -hmm. know, rising block has one part, uh, step and punch has one part. So yeah. doing a technique that has one part and you're, then you're matching that with a step in with the stepping, that's a little bit easier to manage. And I, under I understand that. It's just that. Yeah, it's been a long time working on this. So yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Oh boy! So um, yeah, you know beginner's what, mind. <laughs> yeah, beginner's mind on the real. Like it was so many things today. I'm like, what in the world is happening here? Like we decided on this podcast topic, and now all these things happen. <laughs> it's like literally matching that. Yeah. Well, let's cut to here. Hmm. It's like almost ten o'clock at night, so we're trying to like sort our thoughts. Sort out our here. thoughts still, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll. S I'll say this also referring to our teacher and, and how, how it goes. Dude, it's hard. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. It is hard to be have a beginner's mind all the time. Yeah. It's hard not to, to separate your karate from your person. You know, your, take, not take it personally. You to, know? to separate your person from your karate. Yeah. yeah take you, separate your person from your karate. You know, and, and we could act like we're, we're all we're good at it. But in reality is we still have the same little... Uh, immature four-year-old reactions to cor or corrections that you know anybody else does. It's just I don't that. know who you're talking about. I don't know like a four-year-old. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, that was just you just made my point. That was awesome. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I don't do that. It's not me. It was him. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, what I'm saying is that. You know, Hanzo, quit. that's part of the whole thing is like we understand and accept that we're never we're not there yet mm -hmm. and that we're continually working on it, even though we get our allow our egos <clears throat> to get in the way sometimes. Yeah. We, if we know we that happens, that's humility. Yeah. You know, it and you're like, OK, I got to chill out with that. You yeah. Know? So, so. So let's I didn't think about this, but what are some advantages of having a beginner's mindset? Progression. OK. You know, you're always, it might, sometimes it might be too much. It might be you're progressing too fast and it's, it's lost in a sense where you don't really grasp what's going on. You just kind of know how to do the move in a sense. Um, I think. I'm not following but, what you're saying. Um, sometimes you could have too much of a beginner's mind and soak everything in, but retain nothing. Okay. Um, and sometimes it's bad. Okay. But that, that on the flip side of that, if you do it correctly and you, you know, you're willing to, to invest in certain ideas that maybe resonate with you, okay. um, you'll see that, that you could really have a, a quicker progression, a truer progression, deeper progression. Okay. Um, in the sense that you understand it in, with more depth. Uh, and I'm talking about like black belts that have this attitude. I'm not talking about beginners. Yeah. You know, I'm referring to, you know, Yudancha. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing, you know, because we have a foundation. Mm -hmm. we, we have these ideas, mm -hmm. you know, and we have these, we want, we don't know where, honestly, I don't know where I want my karate to go. Yeah. I just know what I don't want it to look like. Mm -hmm. And I don't want, you know, and I, I know how I want, and I know my perspective of like what I know my strengths and weaknesses are. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I'm in a very, for me to, to have that strength and everything is hard to have a beginner's mind there because I feel like I'm well versed, right? Okay. But I am more willing to have a beginner's mind on ideas outside of that. Okay. Because those ideas might not apply to what I'm doing, but they could give me insight to something that might. Mm -hmm. A rabbit trail is sometimes really productive. Okay. Yeah. But that that doesn't happen unless you have a beginner's mind. Yeah. 
you have to be willing to kind of dive into it and go, you know, that I don't like it, but maybe there's something there. Mm -hmm. Always looking for that something, Mm -hmm. no matter, and that something's different for everybody, I think. Yeah. And that's kind of that whole thing as Yudansha. It's, it's more of a freeing Mm -hmm. thing than it is a restricting thing. Yeah. You know, how many years have we trained trying to fit the syllabus? Mm Mm-hmm. And get our, our, you know, our moves and our stances exactly. And that's great and all, but where's what happens after that? Yeah. You know, for some people, it's okay to train that way for 50 years. And I can respect that. Uh-huh. But I kind of, that, that would kill kill me if yeah. I had to do the same, you know, same things all the time. Mm-hmm. And shape myself this way without any freedom of, of choice and expression. So. Yeah. You know, like kind of scaling this back for like a Q level. I've had students many times that have been like, okay, well, I learned all the hand shot on, so can I go ahead and learn hand need on? Or can I, like, go ahead and test now? And I'm just like, dude, you know, like, barely the movements you have them memorized. It doesn't mean that you're doing them anywhere close to correct, and you got a lot to work on before we go anywhere near the next kata. I mean, and if, I think if you instill that really early, then hopefully it starts to make sense. But I mean, people, people are goal-oriented, so they, they yeah. want to move up, but... I, I um, showing that there's more yeah. to learn if you just keep keep an open mind to what the like maybe what the curriculum is or what the teacher is, has to teach you rather than think, feeling like oh I'm I'm above this I'm a, beyond this I don't need to stay on this kata anymore because I know the moves yeah uh, I usually use a really good tool um, for kids that are that way mm-hmm. so for example hey Aunt Shodan I'm like yeah you know the moves that's great but are your front stances front stances and your back stances back stances Mm -hmm. if they can't tell the difference no you don't know the moves Mm -hmm. you don't know the kata and then like okay and then when they get that i'm like okay are all your blocks Mm double-handed are you parrying your blocks yeah no you're not yeah until you get that done keep on going Mm -hmm. and every kata will be a little bit more in depth Mm -hmm. but there's there should be three four requirements within the kata itself that are very obvious yeah. Well, everybody knows these are the things you have to do to have to understand or, or allow since it will allow you to move on. Mm-hmm. And you just keep on making those kind of requirements in the kata, and it teaches them to have depth of knowledge. Yeah, look beyond the moves, look beyond what's obvious, and see what else there is. Yeah, um, and that that's our responsibility to as somewhat teachers. as teachers to instill the beginner's mind. Yeah, in a sense. Yeah, you know, um, talking about progressing. Um, I have seen this in my own karate, but I started this a long time ago. I had a teacher that was very much like, well, my mentor, Glenn, he he was very much spent a lot of time on fundamentals. And um, this was before I had ever gone to a seminar or met another like big time instructor or seen other perspectives. I mean, he was big on like fixing the stuff that I already knew. And so I got so used to doing doing that kind of thing another example beginner's mind i actually um just started uh, taking voice les- voice lessons from our pastor and um we're going through some of the techniques and he's like look we can't really move on until you get this and this down <clears throat> this and this da- down sorry i'm like choking here <coughs> it's the rona he said we can't really move on until you get this and this down so you know it's not that we're not going to learn more advanced techniques but this is what we have to work on and, and i felt like he was I felt like he was feeling like he had to justify himself to me. And I'm like, look, dude, <laughs> I've been training in karate for almost 20 years. And this is literally what we do is we literally just stick with fundamentals all the time. Because if you can get those down, then you will actually see better progress. Yeah. And that's, that's what I've noticed that throughout all of my karate is that the more I've gone back and revisited fundamental movements, the more I've gone back and looked at the basic stuff, like just working on hand shodan right. and getting those principles down, which I do not have them down, but getting but but getting them nailed down a little bit better has changed my black belt level katas. It's changed the kihon that I do. You know, I, I don't think people, like people know that fu- do, getting fundamentals down uh, more uh, efficiently or, and effectively People can say that they know that that helps with their more advanced stuff, but I think until you experience it mm-hmm. and you've really like put the time and blood and sweat and tears into making your fundamentals better, mm-hmm. I think until you've done that and then gone back to your more advanced stuff, that's when you see a world of difference. Can I get an amen? Yeah, I mean, I and I, I just, I we're emphasizing this because like we've seen it with our own karate, and it's not like we're like world-class karateka by any means but 
we are spending the time on yeah. on our basic stuff. And it's like, you know, when I get a correction that, hey, the move that you learned on the first day of karate is still wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, it, it, it does suck to hear sometimes, but the beauty of it to me is like, you still have more stuff to work on. Like why people would stop trying to learn new things is just totally blows my mind because it's like you have... I think that's something that's just innate in certain people's where they're just constantly <laughs> wanting to learn. Yeah. I don't think that's a, a characteristic that is in everybody. I think that's, you know, if, if it was, we'd all be researchers and... But, I don't you know. know. I, I mean, mean it, it, but no, you could learn from those people. You could learn from the people who are doing the deep digging. But why wouldn't you want to be be open and listen to what people are having to say? I just don't uh, understand the closed mindedness. for everybody. Yeah. That's the thing. You know, that's why some guys could train the same way for thirty years as long as they're getting a good workout, as long as they're part of a group and they're having that brotherhood or whatever. You know, that's they're okay with that. And honestly, I think that's okay too. Just don't put yeah. me in the same boat as them yeah and I, i'm not saying i should be above them i'm just saying don't look at me and go oh yeah you're one of no i i take my practice a different way yeah and and, I, and that t- is the beauty of the art but how cool is it to be part of a group where you know you're continuing to try to improve like okay so what the yeah. first episode we talked about you and our friend sean and yeah. how you guys used to train and you guys had this like tribe like like a bunch of guys that would train together and you would literally ask each other like what are you working on because you want to you want to continue to i guess cultivate an atmosphere of learning you you want to be together and hold each other accountable but you're also trying to get better i just i just feel like that's what karate is so why would because why that's would anybody the tribe do you're part of different yeah okay you know what i mean that's kind of how i see it yeah uh, and i'm okay with that you yeah. know i thought i feel my i find myself very fortunate to have people like that in my life mm-hmm. who want to train like i do and who want to take and approach karate the same way yeah that doesn't mean that anything else is any worse or better. It just means it's different, you know? Yeah. And I just, you know, I have, the, what I'll say about that is, although I respect everybody's choice to do, approach their, their training, their practice the way they want to. Yeah. Don't claim to be something you're not. Be authentic authentic only to yourself. Yeah. And and if you do that, your karate will, will be will be beautiful. Yeah. You know? Well, I guess too. I mean, we haven't even used this word yet, but um, beginner's mind is an and is is indicative of someone who's seeking mastery. Yeah. So if you're trying to actually be the best that you can be, or the best there is, or whatever, if you're trying to continue on that path, understanding that there's not really an end point, that you're always moving forward, then Absolutely. you would have the beginners. You would have that beginner's mindset. If Absolutely. you think you've arrived, then you've already lost. Right. You you already lost. Exactly. So. Snaps and <laughs> head wiggles. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But you know. Snap. That's... Snap. Snap. Yeah. Yeah. The crazy Mic thing drop. about Boom. here's the thing though. Now, here's a question. When you talk about mastery of karate, you want to talk about art, mastery of art, right? Because if it's a martial art, it has to have that that element, mm-hmm. right? What are the requirements to to say one person's a master and one's not? I think if people look at the path of progression and have a basic understanding and if they see someone who's way far in front of them and they can see that they've obviously mastered fundamentals and they've been able to move beyond that's when you start to see someone who's considered a master if they've moved beyond fundamentals and they've right. obviously moved beyond fundamentals because they have yeah, no so flaws in those fundamentals then yeah yeah so it's required that people understand the fundamentals first yeah right. but even people who've mastered fundamentals who are actually moving forward they still have beginner's mind yeah they do Oh, and absolutely. a critical mind. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that's how they get there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, mastery to me, I think it's a horrible word. I don't. I don't agree with it. Yeah. I think um, you don't ever hear people talk about. I don't. I don't know. I'm not. A, I'm not into paintings and stuff. But I'm not into that kind of art. But you never hear them go. They're a master. Well, oh, no, you do say that. They do they, say that. They do say that. Yeah. Oh God. All right. Yeah. I just don't like the word. I think it. I yeah, think you, it, it compl- you want you want something that sounds more like a verb, like like they're verb. like yeah, they're seeking want... mastery. They're yeah. not actually mastered. Yeah, because it, it's a period after the master. Yeah. You know, it's done. It's yeah. a Statement. I don't like that. 
Um, but I'll also say the criteria for me is someone that has on a, a bigger scale, mm-hmm. I agree with you. It's someone that is obviously ahead of the whole the wave, mm-hmm. right? Um, on a lower, more maybe say like a grassroots scale, it's someone who's had a an, an epiphany and maybe a, a, a move forward in their path that's obviously like in their in their thinking is correct. That kind of makes sense. No, how is right. that? And how the, is that a master? I don't like that word. I told you I don't like that word because it implies that. You is that have, what you're trying to say though? Is that that person is? Well, I'm not saying that, but I also and. On a big picture, I am. I'm okay. saying that on a big picture, let's say okay. worldwide, mm. there there's this thing. You know, you got guys. You know, we're Steve Google guys, and, okay. and that's that's what we see as a master. Okay. Um, he's he's got everything that is well rounded, mm-hmm. um, technical application. I mean everything. Okay? Yeah. True master. Yeah. But I don't want to now. I feel like in the there's guys in their own right that have mastered their own kind of path. Okay. Their own so like practice. Separate, okay. You know, and by doing that, they have separated themselves from the pack. Okay. Um, so that's why I don't like the word mastery, because they kind of put both of them on the same page, and they're not. Oh, okay. But they both need recognition because, honestly, in my my opinion, it's they deserve it. Yeah. You no, know. Okay. So they've they've progressed beyond, beyond where most people are, but right. but the path that they've taken is a lot different. Right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm there okay. could be arguments about their fundamentals, but you know. Different Not path. everybody's perfect. Different path. Different path mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But that's what I'm saying I have an issue with mastery is because like, yeah. you can't put those two on the same page. Okay, I see what you mean. To mean. me, a master is com- a well-rounded, complete, you know, individual. Yeah. You know, you could talk about many different things that be found. You know, um, we'll have have the fundamentals and the and the principles to back what they, they say. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but I don't think the guys that you know, done's well in their own path, then I think they need some recognition also. But, they but they're not masters. Yeah. But yeah. you don't want to belittle them either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, yeah. great artist. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I'm not, not saying we're better than people, okay? <laughs> no, just... I'm not. But we're talking about our own preferences here. So yeah, my, like what my opinion doing. of my karate is my opinion. Yeah. So that's how I see it. But I will okay. say this. There's one thing they did. All of them have mastered. And that was a beginner's mind. Because they couldn't achieve the things they've done without it. Yeah, but we've seen many at, people... At times, <clears throat> they had to have the beginner's mind. They yeah, had to have it. Yeah. If they lost it, maybe that's why they stopped the progression. hmm You know? That, yeah. That's their thing, their, their issue, and their story, and I don't care. Mm-hmm. I, I can't speak on that. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, I haven't got there. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be real, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm just saying, they had to have it. Yeah. You know? Maybe that, that it that everybody talks about in karate mm-hmm. is the beginner's mind. Yeah, maybe it is. It is that whole encompassing idea of, of um, attitude, mm-hmm. approach, sincerity, mm-hmm. you know, desire, humility. Yeah. That's my thoughts. I think the only... See, this has kind of got <clears throat> wheels turning a little bit for me. Is if, if the guys that are sometimes called masters, we don't consider necessarily masters, but they are artists in their own right, and they're different. Absolutely. Do they have beginner's minds, but they don't have access to the right knowledge? Or do they not have beginner's minds and have chosen to stop where they are? Well, you, you missed the third option. What's that? They have a beginner's mind, and it is focused in their own personal way. And they're not, it's not a, a thing of access or no access or want or no want. It's the focus of their beginner's mind might have went to a different way. So is that, is that now arrogance because they don't want to see somebody else's point of view? No, I think, um, I think with a critical mind, mm-hmm. you choose what you think is right for your karate. Yeah. And if they choose not to follow teachers, it's because they don't think that applies to their karate. Yeah. Is that arrogance? No. Mm -hmm. I think that's personal choice and freedom. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about art. Yeah. Yeah? Mm Mm-hmm. So, you know, now if they're arrogant and they have ego, (laughs) it'll show up. That's the different story. But if we're talking about 
path and true and honest uh, sincere training yeah. then there is three options there's three things in that situation yeah and the third one is that they have focused on a different area yeah. a different path Un. i think your path is not something that you direct mm-hmm. i think your path is revealed to you through your experiences okay so you Maybe. know that and that's my personal you okay. know let's, i'm not talking i'm not speaking truth here it's not absolutes yeah but that's how i see it mm-hmm. you know that your path is formed by these experiences um, and who says you put, get put in those experiences? Sometimes you can do it yourself or you, you through hard work and, you know, you get there, right? And mm-hmm. then sometimes it has to be where by sheer luck and opportunity, you have an opportunity, you know, you do things. Yeah. It's, it's all the same. I lost my thought. <laughs> I lost my point. I, like, I, I yawned, did it so. I did it. I did it. I did it. <laughs> so the question now becomes, what you been working on? I was supposed to ask you that first. Uh-huh. I'm talking about, okay. Um, so I'm still working on searching. Well, no. Okay. So before today, <laughs> before today, I was working on um, the last section in searching. So from the turn crescent kick into the double down blocky, the upper blocky thing. And then you step to the side and Ushuki is stepping Oizuki. Yeah. Uzuki, Uzuki. They know. And then you turn and do the turn and whatever. Okay. So I was working on not rising up between techniques. Okay. And um, getting my front kick path correct, which apparently was not. I'm not sure if it is now. I got to work on it some more. And then um, when when drawing back the right hand to your chest before the last two punches, like pulling the hand back into the right spot, keeping my shoulders down on both of the punches, getting the punch path to be correct. Pretty much Sochin just sucks because literally everything I do in that con has been wrong. Um, so that's what I was working on. And now I apparently have to work on step and punch again. But this time in Fudodach and also in Zunghusodach because apparently that's not correct either. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I'm working on. What are you working on, dear? Um... I realized in my, my stance is that my lead leg, my hip uh, actually drops and my hips are not level. Okay. I'm working on getting that properly aligned. Uh, level hips. That level hips, not only front and back, but left and right. Okay. Um, a lot of people would get one or the other generally. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to get make sure that I get a complete level platform. I don't think your hips are dropping left and right as much though. That'd be yeah. like a QL problem. Yeah, it's slightly, you can see it. Okay. Um, that being said, I'm trying to trying to kind of keep control of that um, mm-hmm. without looking like I'm leaning back. <laughs> uh, I, I guess you can actually move your hips without actually changing your torso position. Have you ever heard of twerking? Uh, whatever. Jeremiah's going to learn how to twerk before next week. That's what he's working on. Yes, I'm working on jiggling my butt. Twerking. Anyways, that's what I'm working on. I'm trying to get my level hips how to twerk. Uh, and, and keeping my torso, keeping it from leaning back. I guess also I need to go on a diet. I was told today that I, need, I was kind of fat. And the That's most, not what you dude, said. But with the the most. Oh my god! I've never been really told. I, listen, I've never been told I was fat the way I was told I was fat today. <laughs> he went through the extreme pain to make it as polite and as scientific <laughs> he said, as he could. He said. <laughs> he, said he said as as. As men age, sometimes they get that pop. <laughs> <laughs> and they get some back pain and whatever, which Jeremiah is not really. I mean, you guess you have some back pain, I guess. Yeah, dude, I got lower back pain. So, dude, <laughs> <laughs> when he said that, I was like, oh, man. Okay. Well, what's, what's so funny about what's even funnier about it is, like, since we've been on quarantine, Jeremiah's, like, lost, like, 10 or 15 pounds. So, <laughs> which is really funny. So, anyway, yeah. it was. <laughs> it is what it is. So, I'm working on that. Um, I've been working on my slice and kick, but. Uh, it'll get there. Yeah. It'll get there. It's one of those things I think uh, I just got to break the habits. It's, it's like the step and punch, you know, and the timing of the punch. I, I tend to punch too early, so. <laughs> Apparently I do too, so. You know. All right, guys. Well, have a good week. I thought you were going to say happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, no. That's yeah, That's horrible. Just, Never mind. I missed it. Don't, don't do that. Okay. Do um, yeah, you guys, thanks for listening if you lasted this long. And uh, we're going to go to sleep now because it's pretty late. Yeah. But anyway, um, see you next time. Bye. Bye.